Hiya, nephew Nigel got me Christmas present, but it Jamie Oliver cookbook. All of us are aware that we need to eat more vegetable. Uh, no, we don't. No, we don't need to eat more vegetable. Vegetable tastes like sad. Who wants that? Life is about enjoying. Hello, hello, nieces and nephews. Welcome back to Haya Podcast. You'll find the disappointing moments in life and try to make them funny. It's 2022! It's 2022, nieces and nephews. Happy New Year! How is your new year going? I'm recording this January 1st. Uh, it's 7.30 p.m. right now. I had a very nice New Year. I spent New Year's Eve with uh, two good friends of mine in London. Uh, we just went out to a Soho house to celebrate. They had a cocktail night, so it's free cocktails all night. Well, not free. You had to pay like an entrance fee beforehand. You had to pre-book. And then we just got free cocktails on all night after having paid for them two weeks before. So... <laughs> The admission for the event was it was too expensive. You know, most New Year's Eve thing they 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 rip you off because of FOMO, right? Nobody wants to be at home alone on New Year's Eve. There's this huge pressure in society that makes you feel like you need to go out and look like you're having fun. And and to be honest, nobody's New Year's Eve is that fun, right? I'm thinking back to every single New Year's Eve celebration I had. Most of them looked really good on Instagram. <laughs> But in the moment, it was like, ugh, yeah, a bit of a disappointment. So that, I guess, is this week's big disappointment. New Year's Eve celebrations. They're never as great as they seem, right? Let's be honest. Listeners, let me know. Comment down below. If you're on the YouTube, comment down below. Or if you're on the audio only, go to the YouTube and leave a comment anyway on this episode. Episode 4. How was your New Year's Eve celebrations? What did you do? Fireworks? I miss the old days of fireworks in my own backyard because I, you know, I grew up in Malaysia. We probably had a lot more illegal shit compared to here. <laughs> fireworks here, I don't know anyone who, I've never set off my own fireworks since leaving Malaysia. I'm sure it's possible. I've always gone to a place to watch the fireworks. So yesterday, my two friends and I, we went to a Soho house on the Strand. We were trying, we, we tried to see the fireworks there. And then we realized, uh, oops, we are quite far away. We were facing the river. We could see the river, but the, it was still some distance away. So the fireworks, when they came out, they're like little tiny specks far off in the distance. We were watching the fireworks. And then my friend, a friend, my friend who I was with, he brought out his phone and just watched the live stream on BBC's website. And the live stream looked better than the live version of the fireworks. <laughs> it was so far away and tiny. We did see two places with fireworks. We were on the balcony. The balcony is like a pretty big balcony, so you could see most of London. It's a, it's a nice view, but it's just really far from the fireworks. We saw the fireworks on the Strand, and we also saw the fireworks coming from the Shard. We thought they, would, they were going to have fireworks at the London Eye, the big Ferris wheel, but they didn't, probably because COVID. You know, every, everything's COVID now. That's the excuse. <laughs> Why are there no fireworks? COVID. Why are you late today? COVID. You know, everything's a COVID excuse, but that's besides the point. All I'm trying to say is the fireworks were a little bit of a letdown, a little bit disappointing. I think we paid too much money to, to go to that Soho House event. It was 150 quid per person. So when we got to Soho House, the Asianness in us kicked in. We were like, okay, we got to drink 150 pounds worth of cocktails. <laughs> Let's try to recuperate the cost. That's what Asians do, right? When we go to, I, maybe it's not just an Asian thing. I think it's more if you grew up uh, from a family that isn't rich thing. You go to any all-you-can-eat type situation, any buffet, you will try to, your parents will be like, try to recuperate the cost. That's the mentality. If you come from a family of means, if you come from a posh, rich family, you go to a buffet, it's about the experience. Let's try to get 150 pounds worth of joy from this buffet. You know, but if you're poor, you grew up poor like me, let's try to get 150 pounds worth of raw materials. That's a whole strategy to it, isn't there? You go to a buffet as a kid. I remember my mom would just tell me, like, take the expensive stuff. Take the meats. Take the meats. Don't take, don't take the rice. They try to fill you up on the rice. And then you eat too much rice and you don't get to eat the meat. Don't take the rice. Take the meat. Take the prawn. Take the shrimp. I know you're allergic, but still, go, go take the prawns. Take all the prawns and shrimp. Uh, but, you know, the restaurants know what we're trying to do. So they get the cheapest, the cheapest shrimp. And then they will pour a lot, give you a lot of, like, water and soda to fill you up 
So the restaurants know what they're doing. But yes, I don't think we managed to drink 150 pounds worth of cocktails because I'll probably be, I'll probably end up in in the ER if I try to do that. <laughs> 150 pounds worth of cocktails. And okay, it would be easy if every single type of alcohol were on the menu, but it's not. They only have a specific types, you know, certain types of cocktails you can get, certain types of booze, right? You know, if I went in there and tried to get like a Yamazaki 18, yeah, I can easily hit 150 pounds, you know, like three of those. Uh, Yamazaki 18 is um, it's a Japanese whiskey, which is very trendy now. And the whole world's running out of it, the supply, because suddenly Japanese whiskey is so trendy. And these are still, I think, I don't know much about the Yamazaki whiskey company, but I think they're run by just like a small family and they can't make that much. Because Yamazaki 18, the number 18 is how long it's been aged in the barrels, right? So if the demand is high now, they would have had to make more 18 years ago. You know, so 18 years ago, they didn't expect the whole world to like Japanese whiskey. You know, they were just going about their lives in their little barrels, making their whiskey, thinking it's only for Japanese people. Who knew with globalization and everything, Asian shit, certain Asian shit is cool now. You know, and yeah, the, the Yamazakis, the, the whiskeys, is Japanese whiskey is one of them. They've probably just started making more. So in 18 years time, we will have a lot of Yamazaki 18s. Yeah, we didn't get to drink 100, 150 pounds worth of alcohol, sadly. But uh, it was it was a fun night. Overall, we, we danced with some music, drank some booze, met some interesting people. I met these two. We met these two New Zealand people from New Zealand. Two guys, two blokes from New Zealand. Very blokey blokes. And they were talking about COVID in New Zealand. They locked down the country with five cases. A bit extreme, guys. In the UK, we have 150,000 cases a day. We're like, life goes on. <laughs> but New Zealand, five cases. Five cases, we're going to lock it down. Let's kill all the flights. What do I know? I'm just here talking shit. Yes, let's do a... Uh, let me review my 2021 because everybody on Instagram is doing it. You know, they will post like the highlight reels of their life. You know, this is a podcast, this is not Instagram, so we can just be real. I can be real with you. Last year had its ups had its ups and downs. You know, last year, 2021, it started off terribly. I don't know how many of you remember, but uh, if you are following my work from last year, I had some legal issues that I can't talk about, unfortunately, but it's nothing personal. It's more like work, work legal issues, you know, don't worry. It's not a sexual harassment lawsuit. I didn't cost B anyone. <laughs> Oh, no, no, it, it's a work legal issue thing. Can't really get into that that much, but uh, it was a mental toll. It's my first time needing to use lawyers, and it's it, it, it's tough, you know? I don't wish that on anybody. I've been through a divorce, and we had to use lawyers for that too, but, you know, my ex, it was all just procedural. We just basically filled out forms. The lawyers in a divorce filled, basically helped us fill out forms. Uh, and helped us submit the forms to the court because my ex and I were still good friends and she's doing great in London. She's with someone new now. No bitterness at all. The Auntie Helen character is not based off of her, okay? <laughs> she's a very nice person. We still meet up and talk and I think we are good friends now. And I think it works out better for, better for us, you know? I think we are meant to be together for a certain number of years. You know, that's how I view life now. People come and go. You're only supposed to be someone. Sometimes, sure, it's for the whole, your whole life, you'd be meant to be the same person. But some people are only meant to be in your life, maybe, for my case, eight years. And we should just enjoy those eight years and look back at it with fondness. And uh, it, it, was, it was good eight years. My divorce was smoother than this work legal stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's just hard. When, when you get a little bit of success, everybody tries to come at you. Nobody tells you this. Nobody prepares you for this. And even now when I'm talking about this on the podcast, I feel like I'm humble bragging. But I'm, I assure you it's not. It's just me talking about my life. And I think on this podcast, it, it's a nice little glimpse. I, I want to give you, the listener, who's kind enough to tune in, a little glimpse into what I'm dealing with, you know, what my, my life and, and what it entails. And sometimes when you get just a little bit of success, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm well aware I'm a Z-list YouTube celebrity. And I'm okay with that. I'm just happy I make videos that people like and it makes people laugh. But uh, when you get a bit of success, sometimes people come at you. And then I had, it's my one year anniversary since my cancellation. Ooh, one year anniversary. 
Uh, if you don't know, I had some earlier last year, January of last year, 2021. I <laughs> got into some political trouble. That's putting it mildly. I appeared on the front cover of BBC because it's what they call it an anti a censorship row or something, which is crazy. I just want to again. I just want to make videos that entertain. And when I realized making that video became a political statement, I realized I had to just not do that video. That's that's why I took it down. I want my videos to be just joyful and fun. The world's divided enough as it is. You know, I don't want my videos to be political. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> I realize I can't really talk much about anything. Jesus. Try my best to share without getting myself, all the people I love and know into trouble, okay? Just looking out for people here. But I, I did a video with a food vlogger who shall remain nameless. But you, I'm, I'm sure you can search for it. Yeah, I'm sure my, my history is all online. It's very searchable. Uh, and then I realized that video uh, sparked a lot of controversy. And I realized I want my work to... I want my work to be political if I intend for it to be political. Out of respect, I took it down. And I, I have Chinese fans, all over the chi uh, Chinese fans all over the world. And of course, Chinese fans from China. And I'm on Chinese social media. I, I joke about stuff. I say a lot of crazy shit, a lot of inappropriate jokes. But only when I'm attempting to joke, you know, then, then I can say crazy shit. But if it's inadvertently I caused harm, I'm like, okay, out of respect. I'll take the video down. You know, so that that's that's what's going on at that time. The third thing at the start of 2021 was I was going through a terrible relationship thing. Uh, psycho Swedish woman, basically. I talked about it on my previous podcast, Rise to Meet You, but a little bit of a recap. Met this woman on Instagram. Red flag, always. Don't, don't meet women on Instagram anymore. <laughs> they never turn out well. She slid into my DMs before Uncle Roger became a global thing. And then she's from, uh, she lives in Stockholm, from Sweden. So we started talking. She seems kind of cool. She likes my sense of humor. I met up with her in October and we got along really well, had a fun night. And then we kept seeing each other many, many times across that trip. We had a good time. I flew back to London after a week. And then we started talking on the phone every day and we got really close. It, it, it escalated really quickly. Let's put it that way. And then I went back to Sweden again, November, escalated even more. She invited me over for Christmas. And when someone does that, you think, oh shit, this stuff is getting real. This is getting serious. She really likes me. Long story short, she was seeing this other guy the whole time and she chose him over me. Ugh. Ouch, ouch, right? But serves me right for being so naive now I, I, I've learned my lesson now, you know? Now I think if things move too fast or if things are going too well, alarm bells ring in my head. <laughs> you know? <laughs> is this fate or is she a psycho? That's what I think. Well, I don't really think it's fate anymore. I think, okay, it's moving too fast, girl. Slow down. Don't invite me to Christmas if you only know me for a few months, okay? I think Christmas, meeting the parents for Christmas... That is, uh, you have to know me for at least a year. That's my, that's my rule now. But who cares? I'm not dating anyone right now anyway. I'm just kind of enjoying my single life. Just hanging out with friends, building good relationships. So those were the bad parts of 2021. It started off really terribly, but then things picked up. You know, all of last year, things started going better. Uh, February, March rolled around. Uh, I had, a, I, I got a few acting things. I, uh, my videos... I got better at making the Uncle Roger videos. People like enjoy them. And then I announced a tour, uh, which is super cool. Sold out the tour. Many places are sold out. We're adding extra dates. Uh, yeah, plug for the tour. So go go check out my website, nigeluncomedy.com uh, for tour tickets. I'm probably coming to a city or your city to, or, or to a city near you. You know, I'm going to the US, to Australia, Asia, Europe, everywhere. So uh, very excited. That just goes to show cancel culture really doesn't exist, does it? Right? I don't know how much you know about this, but online there's a huge debate going on. Cancel culture is just it's a toxic thing. And to me, to be canceled in January and then to sell out a world tour in November, that just shows it doesn't really matter. What happens is just you get really annoying keyboard warriors online who just leave nasty comments. That's it, really. Nobody really cares. You know, like most people, I'm sure, listener, you, like most people, are reasonable, right? And reasonable people 
know that other people fuck up sometimes and we don't attack them for fucking up. That's just it. You just have to and I just had to endure the 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 onslaught of nasty comments. They're, they're calling me, you know, like uh like a bootlicker, a CCP pig, you know, all that stuff. All that was happening. Every five seconds, I was getting a, a sh- nasty comment, life um, life threatening sometimes, DMs and just just bad messages all from all over the world. Every three to four seconds, there's a new comment, new DM, new tweet about me, you know? And when all that was happening, I was stuck in quarantine in Malaysia because I went back home to visit my parents last January, 2021. So when all that cancellation was going on, I was stuck in that hotel room by myself in my own head. And the only access I had to the outside world was the internet. And that was, whew, that's how I know I'm mentally resilient. If I could survive that, I could survive anything. Didn't really affect me. I was miserable that whole week, don't get me wrong. But then I got out of quarantine, got to hang hang out with my family, see my friends, all good. So I am very mentally strong. If you want to cancel me, you can you can come at me again. You're probably not going to get me down. Once you get past your first cancellation, the second, third, fourth, they don't really matter anymore. <laughs> And trust me, guys, roasting people, you know, I, I I make those videos to roast people, right? And I always get ne- negative comments all the time. Every Any YouTuber, any person who does content online gets negative comments. And now, after going through a cancellation, doesn't really affect me anymore. So that that is good. I highly recommend getting your first cancellation out the way if you can, you know. <laughs> no, don't do it, listeners. Don't do it. I know... In this day and age, you can say the wrong thing online and get fired from your job. I don't want that for you. I have the privilege to uh, not be employed. I'm self-employed, essentially. I work for myself, so I can't fire myself. So I have, I have the luxury of being cancelled. <laughs> being cancelled is actually a luxury. It means you're famous enough for people to give a shit, for people to leave a comment. It means you have a big enough YouTube channel. So being cancelled is a luxury, and I wish, I want to be cancelled again this year. 2022, bring it on. Bring it on, cancel brigade. No, who am I kidding? I'd probably say it, say something inappropriate, <laughs> unoffensive. <laughs> That's the vibe of this podcast. Always offensive, sometimes funny. <laughs> Well, I did post that uh, Syrian carpenter clip on my Instagram. I, oh boy, split the room on that one. <laughs> Go check my Instagram, look at the Syrian carpenter bit, and uh, look at the comments. It's like people writing essays and paragraphs in there, man. And it's uh, thank you for the engagement, listeners. Uh, <laughs> why did I post that? People ask me, why do you post something so inflammatory? And I say, one, it's marketing. And two, I'm trying to build a fan base where people understand that I'm attempting jokes, okay? And for the nature of this podcast, I'm just saying shit off the top of my head. You know, in the stand-up, when you come see a stand-up show, that material's been honed over weeks, months, years, whatever. But on this podcast, you're getting the raw, unfiltered me, just shit going off the top of my head. I'm attempting humor, and sometimes I fuck up. And I'm not asking you to, you know, give me a safe space. You're welcome to criticize me uh, and leave those comments saying that, oh, you didn't find this funny on my Instagram. That's totally cool. But I want to develop a fan base where if I say one thing that you don't find funny, you still remain a fan. That's the kind of fan I, lo- I want. You listen to me say something uh, inappropriate, non- not very PC. And I want my fans to just go, yeah, t- ah, that's just Nigel. That's just Nigel being Nigel. That's just Uncle Roger being being <laughs> being insulting. I want fans who think like that. You know, we can get rid of the people, the listeners who go like, oh, I can't believe you said that. Unfollow, unsubscribe. And I'm like, okay, well, leave. I don't need you. Oh, boy. What else happened? Uh, oh, yeah. You know, in, in addition to the career stuff, the good stuff that happened, bought a house, bought a car. And I know those are just material things that shouldn't matter. And they don't matter that much. But it's just a nice milestone. You know what I mean? So many people, ambitious people especially, chase all these things and they don't slow down to enjoy them. And let me tell you, I enjoy my house a lot. <laughs> I walk around my house with a tape measure, staring at the wall sometimes, admiring how nice that paint is. I only use Ferro and Ball, you know, as a British designer paint brand. A lot of my Asian friends, 
they would take a Pharaoh and Ball paint color and go to Dulux for them to color match it. And of course, my Asian friends would do that. <laughs> but I like to think Pharaoh and Ball, they have some sort of trademark on the chemicals they use and the color looks more saturated, but it just brings me a lot of joy. And you have to s slow down and enjoy your achievements sometimes, you know? And I really enjoy riding in my Tesla. Uh, it's been good. So the thing that I think, you know, material things, those are, those are nice to an extent. But I think the best thing that happened to me last year was because a combination of COVID and YouTube has made me busier in my life now. So I've been doing stand-up a little less. But, you know, obviously with the tour, I've been doing it more, uh, ramping it back up again. But before my tour started last year, I actually had a very normal nine to six, you know, nine to five kind of schedule. I wake up and start working. I work from home, like filming videos and stuff. But in the evening, I got to see my friends more. I got to go back to Malaysia because I'm fully a full-time comedian now. Uh, I can go back to Malaysia and just stay there for two months. And it was so nice to see my parents, you know? That's my round of last year. Some good stuff, some bad stuff. I think net positive, net positive. Hopefully this year is good too. Any New Year's resolutions, nieces and nephews? Uh, let me know. We are gonna do, I, I used to take voicemails from you guys, but I, I realized uh, the voicemail quality isn't great. Google Voice, I don't think it's good enough. So I want you to tell me what your New Year's resolution are and then leave me a voice note on Instagram. I think that that's quite, I like, I like hearing your voice, you know? I like knowing that there's somebody out there on the other end of the line listening, and I hear your voice and it sounds good. Instagram voicemail is a nice way to, to leave me a message. Let me know what your New, Year, New Year's resolutions are and whether you think you'll achieve them or not. And tell me, like in your past, uh, past year's, New Year's, res New Year's resolution, any disappointments there? And keep it light, people. Keep it light. I'm trying to be entertaining here, okay? Oh, yes, and speaking of New Year's resolution, my motto for 2022, it has been decided, it's a very popular line in my Uncle Roger videos, it's use the right amount, not the white amount. <laughs> for a bit of context, it's, uh, I think it's me, Uncle Roger, reviewing Nick DiGiovanni's Thai green curry, and he only puts a little bit of shrimp paste in there. Because he's like, oh, this is this smells really pungent. It's very unappetizing. So he just puts a little drop of shrimp paste, which is not enough. So my response was, use the right amount, not the wide amount. I'm going to turn that into a t-shirt. And feel free to submit designs. I have my merch team who can design stuff. But I always like it when my nieces and nephews, when you guys send me designs. Because I think it's more personal and I like to support my community. You know, so if I like a design and I think it's great, I'll pick a few, I'll buy it from you, uh, and then we can make merch. And you, you, can, you can be proud of yourself for achieving something, you know, that can be uh, bragging rights for you, right? Oh, do you know this YouTuber, Uncle Roger, uses my design for his merch? <laughs> Nobody cares in reality. But I would just like to see your designs. We got some very talented nieces and nephews out there, trust me. I've gotten some really nice fan art before. I've gotten some really shit ones. <laughs> I've gotten tagged in some really shit fan art where I look like a monster. They want to draw my face, but my eyes are in the wrong position and stuff. I just, I still appreciate the effort. So I would just like the post without sharing it. That's what I do. <laughs> if you draw fan art of me and you see me just, and you tag me or you have a hashtag Uncle Roger and it pops up on my feed on Instagram. And if I just like it without sharing it, then you know it's shit. Sorry. But I have a lot of talented people. And if you want to design, use the right amount, not the white amount as fan art, feel free to send it to me. It can be just text. Or it can be an Uncle Roger with a speech bubble. I don't know. Yeah, let, 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 let's try that. Use the right amount, not the white amount. It's just a good motto to have, right? <laughs> just tell your friends that anytime you go to your white friend's place and they're making dinner, just gently remind them that. Can, can we make, like, fridge magnets with that sign on it? So can, can use the right amount, not the right amount, be the new live, laugh, love? <laughs> so you go into any middle-aged white woman's kitchen, it's just there, a big poster, use the right amount, not the right amount. <laughs> that can be a big saying, you know? Every cooking school. This is, this is lesson one. Cooking 101, use the right amount, not the white amount, white amount. Le Cordon Blue or something. <laughs> Any cooking school you go to. If I ever open a restaurant, that's going to be my restaurant's tagline. If I ever write a book, 
That's gonna be my book's、uh, tagline. Nigel Ng, use the right amount, not the white amount. The cookbook. <laughs> oh boy, very very offensive to I. Okay, listen. I know there are white people out there who actually like flavor and use the right amount of ingredients. But come on, let's just have a sense of humor a little bit here, okay? So many people are coming at me. Like, oh, it's a little bit racist. So many people on TikTok. It got eight million views in twenty four hours, which is crazy. But then so many people are like, "Oh, you know, you why do you have to make it racial, bro? Why do you have to make it racial?" Well, it's racial because it's funny and because white and right rhyme. <laughs> so it works. The joke works. Use the right amount, not the white amount. It works. Okay, if you change it to any other race, use the right amount, not the Asian amount. That's really work, right? One of the funniest comments. It's by Apple user two three four eight five three three. You know, TikTok has these weird usernames, right?、Uh, if it's not white, it's not right. My grandpa used to tell me he was a little weird though. Every Wednesday, he and his friends dressed up as ghosts. <laughs> great comment. I I hearted it. Great great comment. Or this one. How is that not racist? Imagine he had said black amount. Well, listen. Is it a little bit racist? Probably. You know, contrary to popular belief, I think you can be racist to white people too. You know, and I frequently am. <laughs> Have you seen any Uncle Roger video? Can we just normalize mild racism if it's an attempt of humor? You know, can we normalize that? Because I I enjoy shitting on all sorts of people. You know, including white people, and sometimes you shit on them based on their race. So it's like, come on, man. If it's funny enough. We can let mild racism slide. That that's my stance on this. <laughs> can we dial it back on the let's not be racist at all part po- like policy and adopt the um if you are racist you better be funny policy. <laughs> There we go. Cancellation of twenty twenty two. Somebody clip that up and submit it to BBC or whatever、uh, Vice or whatever news source. There we go. My 2022 cancellation in the bag. Let's try to make this happen, people. Let's try to engineer a cancellation for me, because truth be told, I love being a center of attention. And <laughs> how much more center of attention can you be if you are in the midst of being cancelled? <laughs> no publicity is bad publicity, people. Okay, so nieces and nephews, if you are a fan. Of my work, please try to get me canceled. Please, <laughs> please clip up the horrible shit I say and remove all the context <laughs> and submit it everywhere. But yes, I I do think you can be racist to white people. I frequently am, and people people like it, you know. So I do what people like. My whole career is built on shitting on white people, man, and I feel like, you know, sorry, but <laughs> it's kind of funny though. You, you, I'm, I'm sorry you guys are the targets now, but I'm sure times will change, and maybe in a few years' time, it will be trendy again to shit on Asian people. And trust me, I will do just that. A lot of my Asian women friends, who are based in the Western world, they get a lot of yellow fever type guys approaching them, and I feel bad for them because I've been reading some short stories and essays by Asian. Women writers, and it's a very it it is a it is a common problem. I I know, I know. For some reason, Asian women are fetishized in society, and、uh, to be honest, I find Asian women very attractive. So good thing I'm Asian. Is it possible for me to fetishize Asian women, or <laughs> or if I start dating, I I do like them. I think they uh they age more gracefully and uh. They tend to be on 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 the smaller side, you know. Asian guys, we're also on the smaller side, bone structure wise, right? So Asian women tend to be on the smaller side too, and dating a small woman is nice sometimes, you know. So is it possible for Asian men to fetishize Asian women? Can I do that? Can we not just have white men able to fetishize Asian women? What about me? I want to fetishize Asian women too. Can this not be just a white guy thing, please? White people have all the fun. They get to have make shit food and butcher people's cuisine, and they get to fetishize Asian women. What about me? I want to fetishize you guys too. 
<laughs> there we go. Cancellation point number two. So, I want to fetishize Asian women. Let me let me have a chance at that. I think I'll be good at it too. You know. Trust me, I think I'll be better at white people than fetishizing Asian women. You know, oh, white guys go to Thailand and try to get a wife there. I'll go to Thailand and get two wives. How about that? Two can play this game. Let Asian men fetishize Asian women too. I want yellow fever. I've dated Asian women before. Nobody says I have yellow fever. Most of my ex-girlfriends are Asian. Ah, what do you think? What do you think about that? I watch, you know, my f- I've used to watch anime and read manga because they always say like, right, the 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 white guys who 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 like Asian women tend to also like manga as a stereotype that kind of that type of white guy and uh I used to read manga growing up. Let me fetishize you Asian ladies, okay? So, if you're an Asian woman, sorry, sorry Asian guys, I'm I'm very straight, very hetero. Uh we talked about it in the last podcast, but I do love a nice scented candle, so uh everybody's on the spectrum, isn't it? <laughs> Everybody's on a scale But If you're an Asian woman And you're sick of white guys fetishizing you Let me fetishize you For a change Would it be nice All I'm saying is If you want me to fetishize you uh, Slide into the DMs Email me Hiyapot at gmail.com <laughs> I, w- I, w- I just want to see What kind of DMs and emails I get after this <laughs> Write in with your stories of other white guys seeing you as just an object, okay? Because I will see you as an object too, if you want. A consensual objectification, that's what I do. (laughs) If you want me to treat you like a human being, I can do that as well. But sometimes it's fun to be treated like an object, you know? I usually have a policy where uh, if I'm not seeing someone seriously, I don't let them stay over, you know? That's kind of my, my policy, right? I think it works for everybody. I, I have some people I casually see, and they, they are okay with that. That's that's what they're on board with. So one time, this woman I was casually seeing, she came over, uh, and then, you know, we did some stuff, and then I told her, yeah, okay, should I get you an Uber? So I got an Uber back the next day. Uh, she was like, yeah, you know, you kind of made me feel like a, a little bit of a whore, and I apologize. I didn't make, mean to make you feel like that. But, um... It got me thinking, you know, like, I go to some place, and I get laid, and I get a free taxi back? That sounds like a nice life. I would love to be treated like a whore. You know, you, you just go, you, 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 you bang, and then you go home, so I get to get laid and have the evening to myself? Please, treat me like a whore! <laughs> Please. Why don't more people want to feel like a whore? They have so much free time. <laughs> we don't have to cuddle. Oh, God, treat me like a whore. Don't cuddle with me. Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. Cuddling, that I don't want to cuddle. I just want to bang and leave. So please, treat me like a whore and let me fetishize you sweet Asian ladies. <laughs> God, that sounds really creepy. Okay, okay, sorry about that. Uh, but my, my point stands, my point stands. You uh, Let Asian men have a chance to fetishize Asian women too, okay? Let's not let white people have all the fun. Hey, nieces and nephews, if you're enjoying the episode so far, I really appreciate it if you guys could go on to Apple Podcasts and leave a five-star rating and review the podcast as well. Uh, I read every single review I've gotten. I've gotten a few, quite a few now, and thank you so much for all the support and love you've shown the podcast. I really appreciate it. I read every single review. So even if you have some feedback or constructive criticism, please feel free to write a review there. Give, still give it five stars, though. Don't hurt the pod. Uh, but you can uh, give me five stars and give me some feedback. What, what do you want to hear on the pod next? What do you want me to talk about? Anything goes. I think Spotify, you can rate as well. So leave me a five star, leave me a five star rating on there. Uh, if you're on YouTube, just give the video a like, hit subscribe, ring the bell. That's how you can support the channel. And thank you for being on this journey with me. Okay. So for this segment, it's, it's still me here, right? It's still Nephew Nigel right now. Uh, I got Uncle Roger a little Christmas present. Uh, I think he'll like it. I think he will be overjoyed when he sees that th- I've gotten him Jamie Oliver's cookbook. Hey, hey. Oh, no. Yes, and not any cookbook. is Jamie Oliver Veg. So only vegetarian recipes. So Uncle Roger, you ready for this? Okay. So let's see, let's see what Uncle Roger thinks of Jamie Oliver's veg. 
系啊 ，Nephew Nigel got me Christmas present, but it Jamie Oliver cookbook. Why he wasting money? Uncle Roger don't like this. See, I gonna read maybe read a few recipe, but see my leg not even on chair. My leg down from chair already because I know this gonna be bad. Hi ya, this is Jamie Oliver wedge. Easy and delicious meal for everyone. He get half correct. I sure it easy, but delicious not so much. Okay, introduction. This is a word from Jamie. I'm fairly sure that if you picked up this book and you're reading this word, you're already asking yourself a few questions about the food you eat. All of us are aware that we need to eat more vegetable. Uh, no, we don't. No, we don't need to eat more vegetable. Vegetable tastes like sad. Who want that? Life is about enjoying. Life too short. Life too short. Uncle Roger grow up so poor. But every time I get to eat meat, that a very special treat. Because the whole week I just eat bean sprout and potato and rice. Hi, yeah. And then once my my mom once a week she save up money. And then she feed us beef fui yo, and that is always the best Saturday ever. All family sitting around dinner table, eating beef, and Uncle Roger parent very loving. Even though they beat me, many people think when you beat your children, you don't love your children. But that's the opposite. You beat your children because you love your children. In Western world, nobody in white people country nobody beat their kid anymore. It a lost art form. So stop beating your kid now and feed them meat. Okay, back to book. All of us are aware that we need to eat more vegetable and of the extraordinary health benefits attached to doing so. But in a busy, fast-paced life where meat is so convenient and available on every corner, the question is: Can veg dishes really cut the mustard? What cut the mustard mean? Who cutting mustard? Why you cut mustard, Jamie? Hi, yeah, mustard is type of sauce. Type of condiment. Don't cut mustard. Cut your hair. Your hair too long. Don't cut mustard. Mustard you just dip. Mustard like chili jam. Same condiment. Do you cut chili jam, Jamie? This guy cut mustard and chili jam. So weird. Don't take knife and cut must. Hi. Okay. I think it's just English saying. I don't think he actually physically gonna go cut the mustard. Can veg dishes really cut the mustard? Can they be truly tasty and make you feel satisfied and happy? I believe that the answer is a gigantic yes. Uncle Roger disagree. So, with that in mind, welcome to the wonderful world of delicious food that just happen to be meat free. Hi, yeah, Jamie. You can't even make good food when you have meat. I don't trust that you can make good food with no meat. I actually started writing this book eight year ago. It been a real labor of love. But now is the time to publish it, accompanied by a beautiful new and exciting TV show. Ha! See, Uncle Roger knew it. British celebrity chef. Any time they have TV show means they have new book to plug. You ever notice this? Every time they have new book come out, they got new TV show. Hi, yeah, why? Jamie, give other people a chance. There's so many talented chefs out there with no TV show, but Jamie Oliver get like 25 TV show every year. He even sell knife and saucepan in all the shopping mall. Hi, yeah. So many of my niece and nephew they send me picture of the Jamie Oliver saucepan, and I like Jamie, 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 Jamie. No need to sell your saucepan in Malaysia. Okay, we don't want your saucepan. We got our own saucepan. We want to support local, support our own people. Is that saucepan even any good? Uncle Roger don't know. Maybe one day Uncle Roger will buy Jamie Oliver saucepan and reveal for you. I will reveal Jamie Oliver cooking utensil. Should I do that? Should that be Uncle Roger next YouTube video? Uncle Roger reveal Jamie Oliver cookware. Fui yo, that actually very good idea. Niece and nephew, let me know if I should do that episode. On my YouTube channel. Okay, let's check out some of Jamie Oliver recipe. Okay, Uncle Roger found this. Look at this picture. So beautiful. This is sweet and sour stir fry. But I have to give you this, Jamie. Every photo in this book, very good, very very good, very beautiful. I think you have very talented cameraman. If only the chef talented as well. Wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sweet and sour stir fry. 
Uncle Roger not going to read out whole recipe because that'd be so boring. Usually stir fry, you put meat in it, some type of meat, like chicken, like beef, like pork, any type of meat you want. But I wonder what he used to replace meat. Let's see. Oh, he say here, I use peaches. I love them, but apricot and pineapple work as well. He's stir frying a peach? Who stir fry peach? You just putting fruit in saucepan? Hiya, where got nice? You stir fry meat because you can char the meat, give it more flavor, but you peach tastes good as it is. Don't throw peach in saucepan and you say it's supposed to be healthy. Peach so many vitamins, but vitamin C throw in heat, vitamin C dead, vitamin C all gone. Who cooks stir fry like this? Using peach and stuff. Hold. Holy shit. Nephew Nigel, give me terrible gift. This, this book already break Uncle Roger heart. Hi, yeah. He putting peach in saucepan. Jamie, what you doing? You teaching all vegetarian people wrong thing. You want to make stir fry, you vegetarian. Maybe makes tofu stir fry. How about that? Tofu nice. Jackfruit could also. So many vegan people use jackfruit as meat substitute. That okay? I think jackfruit fruit, but jackfruit texture when stir fry it okay. But peach? Why you use peach? You, oh, cannot. This cookbook cannot. This book useless. This book, the best thing you can do with this is to burn it. It can keep me warm for five minutes. Hi, yeah. That's the only use of this book. To keep me warm. Okay. Jamie got a whole chapter here called Maximizing Flavor. Flavor is subjective. But here are some of my favorite tips and tricks for really bolstering and getting the most out of your ingredient. Okay, let's see what Jamie do. Jamie talk about so many different spices here. He talk about uh, fresh herb, dried herb, salt, flavored salt. What is flavored salt? Is it MSG? Let's see what is flavored salt. Flavored salt is a fun, clever way to have array of preserved flavor, just a pinch away. Simply whisk sea salt in the blender with your chosen flavor. Herbs, chilies, citrus zest, and juice, dry mushroom and seaweed all brilliantly work well. Spread out on a tray to fully dry, then bash up and keep in sealed jar for future use. By default, creating a flavored salt result in a slightly lower salt seasoning. Happy days! Hiya, Jamie. You want flavored salt? Just use MSG. MSG is the king of flavor. You don't need flavored salt. You need king of flavor. That's what you need. This book, he take eight years to write this book. Eight years? Hiya, uh, that is eight years of your life wasted, Jamie. Anyway, that's enough of his book. Uncle Roger want to write cookbook one day. I have so many recipes in my head, so many cool ideas and fun stories to share. Would you buy Uncle Roger cookbook? My cookbook idea, so many British chefs, so many Western chefs, they write cookbook. It's all about simple. Make things simple. Make ramen in your house in 10 minutes. See, or Jamie Oliver, five ingredients anybody can make. They make food too simple. Uncle Roger don't like. Uncle Roger like complicated. Uncle Roger like traditional, like correct. Like you make fur, you need 12 hour bone broth. You make ramen, you need bone broth 18 hour, 24 hour. That's the correct way to do things. But nobody write cookbook for the correct way anymore. Everybody write the easy way. Hiya. So when Uncle Roger published my own cookbook, I hope niece and nephew support. Uncle Roger, traditional recipe. That's all Uncle Roger gonna do. It's gonna be all old school, correct meal. And I'm gonna get help from all my Asian cooking friends. It's gonna be so good book. Auntie Helen will see the cookbook and decide to come back to me. That's how good the cookbook gonna be. Fuyo! Anyway, that's all for this week. Bye bye!